seen a banana that you got from the grocery store rot over time? What about some bread? Has it ever gotten moldy? And how about when you're outside and you guys see a dead squirrel and it looks different from when it was alive? Why do these things change over time? What in the environment is causing their tissue to change, their skin to change, their bones to change? Well, the simple answer to our question is decomposers. Decomposers are organisms in the environment that break down dead organic matter in order to recycle it and reuse it for other life on Earth. Some examples of decomposers are bacteria, fungi like mushrooms, earthworms, flies. What these things do is they break down dead bodies, dead organisms, to be able to put their nutrients back into the soil, back into the air, back into the water. If decomposers didn't do this, we would run out of nutrients on Earth and life would not be able to sustain as long as it could. The specific decomposer we will be using in this lab is called yeast. Looking at the yeast on this paper towel, it doesn't look that much alive. It's very dry and powdery. However, it is a single-celled eukaryotic fungi. It looks dead because it's actually dormant, sleeping, like a volcano that hasn't erupted in a while. To activate the yeast cells in this mix, you need to mix it with warm water and a food supply. That brings us to the food supply. The food supply that we'll be giving our yeast is called sugar or glucose or C6H12O6. Glucose is an important macromolecule in all living things that once they die can be broken down and recycled into atmospheric carbon dioxide. The equation for the breakdown of sugar by yeast can be shown as this. On the left side of your arrow, you have the reactant, sugar. On the right side of your arrow, you have two things produced, ethanol and carbon dioxide. The middle on top of your arrow is yeast because yeast is causing the breakdown of sugar into ethanol and carbon dioxide. In this lab particularly, we're gonna be focused on the production of carbon dioxide, which is a atmospheric gas. In this lab, you'll need some regular household sugar, just a teaspoon will do, which is why I have this plastic spoon here to measure that out. You also need one packet of active dry yeast that you can get from the grocery store, some scissors to open up the packet because it is kind of difficult to tear open. You'll also need a clear plastic bottle, a water bottle, a spray bottle, anything that you can see through. And go ahead and rip off the wrapper to help you see as well. And you'll need one balloon. You'll want to stretch out and blow up the balloon a couple times so that balloon is nice and ready to be filled up with air. I forgot to say this in the materials, but you will need about one inch of warm water in your plastic bottle. You're going to go ahead and add one teaspoon of sugar and carefully pour it in so the sugar can dissolve in the water. Remember, the sugar is the food source for your yeast. I'm going to go ahead and close it and kind of shake it up to get it to dissolve. Alright, now I'm going to add one full package of active dry yeast into my bottle. Now I'm going to cap it, but I'm not going to shake it so hard so that I kill the yeast. I'm just going to swirl it gently, get the yeast acquainted with their food source in that warm water. Remember, they'll wake up from the warm water and then they'll start eating the sugar, which they will then break down into carbon dioxide. Once I have my whole reaction in the bottle, I'm going to go ahead and cap it off with my balloon. Carefully put the balloon. Whoops all the way over the top of the bottle. Make sure it's sealed all the way down so it doesn't pop off when it gets filled up with air. Now that we have our yeast, warm water, and sugar in this bottle and ready to fill up the balloon with the carbon dioxide, we're gonna go ahead and let it sit for about an hour and hopefully we get carbon dioxide to fill up this balloon and blow it up on its own. After letting our reaction progress for about an hour, you can see that we actually have inflated our balloon. Here is our yeast and sugar mixture at the bottom. You can see all of these bubbles right here are ethanol and carbon dioxide production. This has filled up the bottle pushing carbon dioxide gas all the way to the top expanding the balloon. Before I clean up my mess, I want to go ahead and recap the lab that we did. Remember we used yeast, which is a decomposer, to break down sugar, which is an important nutrient. When yeast breaks down sugar, it recycles carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Therefore, we visualize the decomposition of sugar by yeast to recycle and reuse carbon dioxide. 
Thanks for watching and make sure you tune in to the next video.